Only the most minimal interference tonight from the CIA. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if this connection holds together. I'm trying to talk about classified information. I'm trying to talk about Havana Syndrome tonight, but... Okay, it seems like we're back. Hopefully we're back. I guess we'll find out soon. Oh, there I see everybody. Okay. Yeah, our connection, I don't know. Something crapped out in the beginning. <laughs> Emu, good to see you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the stream. I was just sharing some really unfortunate information. Um, I was sharing... I went to the doctor today, and um, I was recently diagnosed with Havana Syndrome. Um, I'm a little bit in a dour mood. Uh, I was taken aback by this terrible, devastating information. I've had uh, pain, ringing in the ears, and cognitive dysfunction. <laughs> so, uh, Havana, Havana Syndrome back in the news for some reason. We're going to investigate this a bit tonight. People have been talking about it in the Discord. Um, all of that up top in the stream is a joke because I do not have health insurance because uh, we... Uh, don't have it in the United States. So uh, there's no doctor to diagnose me. I'm just furiously Googling all of my symptoms. And I think I've come to a very wise conclusion. Vanna syndrome, formerly anomalous health incidents, is a medical condition reported by U.S. and Canadian government officials and military personnel, it's primarily in overseas locations. Reported Mass symptoms protests. range in severity Even from pain and ringing in the ears to cognitive dysfunctions and were first reported in 2016 by U.S. and Canadian embassy staff in Havana, Cuba, hence the name. Beginning in 2017, excuse me, beginning in 2017, earned carbon coins from the sequestration of your seaweed peat bog are pooled into your community DAO to purchase an old Italian high-energy laser weapon system. The reviews assure you this will be operational and send a strong signal to the Marazon forwarding operating base 20 kilometers to the southeast. In 2017, more people, including U.S. intelligence and military personnel and their families, reported having these symptoms in other places such as China, India, Europe, and Washington, D.C. Some studies indicated that foreign actors were not responsible for most of these cases. So if you've been following this in the news, there's been a slurry of different stories. We're going to look at one here from the BBC, and we're also going to watch, uh, this just came out, literally earlier today, I guess um, uh, on Sunday, but um, less than a day ago, 20 hours ago, there's a piece from 60 Minutes that we'll watch about Havana Syndrome, which has been kind of in the news for the last like eight years. I'll share my screen here. So I think, what, are we, what order are we going to do this in? First, we'll go through this piece. Uh, we'll go through, oh, well, sorry, we'll, look, we'll listen to the sound first. Uh, we've got a clip of the actual sound here. Um, and then we will explore the piece from the BBC. We will uh, look into the, we'll do 60 minutes. We'll look at a piece from Jacobin and a few other sources. So this is our topic for tonight. We'll see how we do with it. Um, I think maybe to get a baseline for this, just, you know, what kind of energy weapon, sound weapon we're talking about. I thought it would be appropriate to start the stream with an actual sample of what this sound supposedly is. So this is from Associated Press. AP obtains a recording of what some U.S. embassy workers heard in Havana as they were attacked by what investigators initially believed was a sonic weapon. The recording of a high-pitched noise is one of many taken in Cuba since attacks started on October 12th. Let's all get brain damage together. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to blast the volume. I'm going to crank this up as high as possible, and then we will all get Havana Syndrome together. The recording gives us the first tangible sense of what it was like for these American government workers in Havana who were hearing these unexplained sounds in their residences and later developed physical symptoms. Americans who heard these sounds in Havana have described slightly different sounds, and even in some of the recordings that the AP has reviewed, there are slight variations. However, this high-pitched cricket sound seems to appear in all of them. The U.S. Embassy in Havana has played these recordings for Americans who are working there so they know what to listen to. These recordings have also <laughs> been reviewed by people who heard the sounds firsthand in Cuba, and they confirm that the recordings are generally consistent with what they heard.
We still don't know what is causing the sound, and the recordings don't appear to have significantly furthered the investigation. Even with the recordings being analyzed, the U.S. government still says it has been unable to determine what is causing the sound. You won't be hearing it, but of course it is going into your system. It's like a, you know, acoustic hammer which is hitting you. You're just not able to hear it because its frequency is much higher. So there were some concerns to it, and if it is really, really high, it could create um, uh, some, you know, what we call as a bioeffect. It's possible that what we're hearing on the record. Can I, I got to ask a question, like, if it's too high for you to hear, what are we listening to on the recording? I'm just, I'm a little bit confused all over the Recording place. is actually only part of the picture. Traditional recording devices are only able to pick up certain types of frequencies, such as the ones that the human ear can hear. It's possible there are additional frequencies, possibly those too low or too high to be picked up that are also happening when these attacks occur. All right, well, uh, you know, the theme, I initially had thought that maybe we would do some research on this stream, but actually I think it would just be the wisest, I'm gonna crank up the volume all the way here. Uh, we'll just expose ourselves to Havana syndrome on loop for two and a half hours. Is this, this is a better auto experiment, right? We're just gonna listen to this. We're not doing, <laughs> we're not doing any, any research. There's nothing to watch this evening. We're not gonna read any articles. We're not gonna look at the BBC. We're not gonna go to Jacobin. We're not gonna watch a piece in 60 minutes. I'm just gonna sit here in silence and induce Havana syndrome over YouTube, I guess. A little annoying. A little annoying. This is <laughs> this is the gateway tape deprogramming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, let's bang out our first article here. Where are we in the uh, in the program for tonight? Okay, we listened to the sound. Um, this is from seven hours ago. So that clip was 2017. This has been in the news for a little while. My dog hasn't flinched. Thank God I'm a boomer reporting the channel right now. It's too late. You've already got Havana Syndrome. Everyone else does too. Havana Syndrome report links mystery illness to Russian, <laughs> to Russian intelligence unit. We're doing it again. I'm surprised, to be honest, I'm surprised it took the liberals eight years to link it to Russia. The syndrome was first reported by diplomats at, diplomats at the U.S. Embassy in Cuba in 2016. Personnel stationed around the globe with, quote, Havana Syndrome, Zanis, Havana Syndrome, formerly anomalous health incidents, do not research. They've reported unexplained symptoms such as dizziness. They may have been targeted by Russian sonic weaponry, according to a joint investigation by The Insider, Der Spiegel, and CBS's 60 Minutes. People are fucking losing their minds, bro. They're losing their minds. Let's put this up in the in the smaller window here. Okay. <sighs> Moscow has denied the accusations. U.S. officials previously said it was unlikely a, unlikely a foreign power that was to blame. But in their assessment of, quote, anomalous health incidents, which was delivered last year, they did not give any alternative explanation, frustrating those who have been affected. And a flag is cracking me up in the chat. <laughs> The American officials also acknowledged that there were varying levels of confidence in the assessment between the different intelligence agencies involved. The phenomena gets its name from Cuba's capital, Havana, where the first case was detected in 2016, though, though the new report suggests the first cases may have happened in Germany two years earlier. Other cases have been reported from around the world, from Washington to China. On Monday, the Pentagon said that a senior Defense Department official attended meetings la at last year's NATO summit in Lithuania had experienced sy symptoms similar to Havana Syndrome. American personnel struck with the condition, including White House, CIA, and FBI staff, my goodness, feel so bad for them, these poor, these poor officers, have complained of dizziness, headaches, difficulty concentrating, and an intense and painful sound in their ears. More than 100 reports of the mysterious, I'm moving my tabs over here, of the mysterious ailment have been made, with dozens of cases still officially considered unexplained. U.S. lawmakers have passed legislation aimed at supporting victims. Well, of course, yeah, because literally everyone who contracts this is an intelligence officer. Very trustworthy, extremely reputable, and uh, thank God they have adequate representation in government. 
However, a National Institute of Health NIH study published last month said that MRI, sca MRI scans had failed to detect evidence of brain injuries in dozens of U.S. personnel who reported AHIs, anomalous health incidents. There has long been a suspicion that those that those affected have been hit by directed energy or microwaves fired from hidden devices. A possibility was acknowledged in an earlier U.S. intelligence report. <laughs> but wait, aren't they vaccinated? The, <laughs> the fresh media in investigation alleges that members of a specific Russian military intelligence unit known as 29155 may have targeted the brains of U.S. diplomats <laughs> with directed energy weapons. Holy shit, dude. Holy shit. This is like... It's, it's really wild because how long ago was it when the liberals were decrying that uh, it was racist and xenophobic to claim that there were directed energy weapons like at all? And now somehow it's the deep state itself has been targeted with direct energy weapons. This is fucking wild. It's hard to just like keep track of like get your story straight. You know what I mean? Get your story straight. What the fuck is going on here? It says there is evidence that places members of the unit in cities around the world at times when U.S. personnel reported incidents. The secretive unit undertakes foreign operations and has been linked to incidents including the attempted poisoning in the U.K. in 2019 of Sergei Skri Skri Skripal, Skripal, I don't know how to say his last name, a former Russian spy. As part of the investigation, the Insider, a Russia-focused site, reported that an officer in the 29155 unit had been rewarded for their work related to development, the development of non-lethal acoustic weapons. An American military investigator examining instances of the syndrome told 60 Minutes that the common link between victims of the syndrome was a Russia nexus. I'm just happy to believe that Russia is behind everything, to be honest. Greg Edgren explained there was some angle where they had worked uh, they had worked against Russia, focused on Russia, and done extremely well. He also said that the U.S. official bar of proof to show Russian involvement had been set too high as his country did not want to face some very hard truths. That's, I mean, if there's anything that is characteristic of U.S. intelligence and the political establishment, they are very hesitant to blame Russia for anything so credit where credit is due sounds like a rigorous investigation i'm absolutely willing to believe in response to the media investigation kremlin spokesperson dmitry peskov said no one has ever published or expressed any convincing evidence of these unfounded accusations anywhere so all of these are nothing more than unfounded accusations one victim of the syndrome an fbi agent completely plausible very trustworthy uh, <laughs> clear, clear objective opinion, no bias in this whatsoever. He told 60 Minutes, uh, she told 60 Minutes about her experience of being hit by a powerful force at her home in Florida in 2021. Bam, quote, bam, inside my right ear, it was like a dentist drilling on steroids, she told the program. That feeling when it gets too close to your eardrum, it's like that times 10. The woman, known as Carrie, said she ultimately passed out and later had issues with memory and concentration. According to the record, um, responding to the report, U.S. official told CBS News, the BBC's U.S. partner, that they would continue to closely examine anomalous health incidents, but repeated their position was that it was, quote, very unlikely a foreign adversary is responsible. But they said they did not, quote, not call into question the very real experiences and symptoms that our colleagues and their family members have reported, end quote, saying their work on such incidents was a priority. John Bolton, <laughs> are you kidding me? John Bolton, who served as Donald Trump's national security advisor, said the new allegations are very concerning. <laughs> this, is, this is it. It's through Havana Syndrome that the liberals take their final form in just in becoming John Bolton fucking kidding me oh my god i don't think the government frankly when i was there took it seriously enough he told cnn i don't think they've taken it seriously enough since then but republican senator jd vance a top trump ally rubbished the report writing on x feels like a lot of journalists have lost their minds amen amen <laughs> cuba has daily 10 hour 10 hour 10 hour long blackouts because they can't even turn on the damn energy weapons 
this is uh, not what I expected. Not what I expected to be relitigating eight years later. But it's back in the news largely because of this massive story that aired on 60 Minutes uh, yesterday, last night, apparently. And I'd like to spend some time watching that tonight. This is about half an hour for this. Uh, and what I plan to do is open this up in another tab and just play Havana Syndrome all night. And we will be, we will emerge unscathed. And ostensibly, uh, this will be proof, this is the auto experiment, that if we just take a, a, ma a macro dose of Havana Syndrome and we're fine, that means all the intelligence people are fucking making it up. They never heard crickets and frogs before. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Tonight, we have important developments in our five year uh, let me turn investigation. This gonna, I was going to wait until, like, I was going to get us, like, you know, an hour and a half deep into the stream, and then I would give my opinion about this. But I feel like it's just, it's impossible to hold back. But it's, I mean, it feels like the clear implication of this is that it's a psychosomatic response of people who do dark, terrible things in U.S. intelligence have a, well, reasonable paranoia, but also a tremendous sense of guilt about all of the harm that they're doing in the world. And so that paranoia and guilt manifests in that they are being blasted from unseen, non-existent space weapons or some shit. It's like, it's like cops that are, uh, they're, they think that they're exposed to fentanyl and then they start miming the, uh, the, the symptoms of an overdose. This sounds all extreme, extremely, extremely suspicious. I'm sorry. Like, that is it right there. <laughs> it's been refined on us. We are the test subjects. It's like completely psychologically manifested because they are doing heinous shit to other people all the time. Incredible. Incredible. Colleen in the chat says, another possibility, the weapon does exist and the U.S. makes it and is marketing it to other countries by this public propaganda story, like how they advertise spy satellites spy satellites by trying to trick trevor paglin like 10 years ago hold on so they're like this guy is top level russian military guy then he dies in ukraine and they're just like he was sent there as punishment i'm i'm very skeptical all right we're halfway we're halfway through it um what's the smoking gun so far the smoking gun is the russian passport and that the guy studied sound weapons uh, contributing to that is he has a device that can erase the car's computer, including its GPS, potentially. Um, but like, what's the, I guess we just have the circumstantial, like the, the, the testimony of, um, the different people who believe that they've been targeted by these sound weapons. And then we have the Russian passport, but. Aside from that, let's see if we get anything a little bit more substantial. Sure. Non-intelligent civilian to be targeted in my home while I was doing laundry. I was hit with the Havana gun, whatever they call it. Like, what would you need to show? Like, what, what would you need to show people? Like, could we just start that right now? Just, <laughs> you know, they've, they've been targeting CIA, FBI, all sorts of uh, deep state intelligence, and now... Uh, you know, the, the top, like the best, the top five, 10 percent of uh, deep state intelligence. And they've also been targeting Internet artists for some reason. We can't figure out why <laughs> Russian agents have all been targeting these Internet artists. And they just spontaneously manifested the symptoms out of nowhere, like a whole bunch of people, like 200 people across like, you know, New York, L.A., Kansas City, uh, the, the U.K., Australia, like all over the place. These artists just started getting hit with this energy weapon from 29158475640. We have the evidence right here. Josh, I'm literally pointing my directed energy weapon. No, no, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> and the fact that you're pretending like you don't feel it destroying your inner ear is suspicious to me. Can you show me your passport on stream to prove you aren't Russian? That's very true. That is very true. Good point here. Okay. How do we answer for the family members? One of the things that was made evidence during the chart of truth, people remember this, this was an enormous, enormous iceberg conspiracy that went on for, you know, 50 conspiracies per tier. There's like 15 tiers. And a number of those things were like kind of paranormal, but they were also examples of like mass hysteria where people would see someone manifest symptoms for some type of like paranormal, supernatural, you know, uh, whatever, like um, 
nuclear fallout raining down and uh, the the window pitting incident is the first one that comes to mind that people were spontaneously detecting little dents all all across their windshields and they were kind of near to a nuclear test site within like a few hundred miles and one of the theories was that wind had blown over nuclear particles that was uh, made visible by the glass and now everybody all over the town was seeing it uh, not the next town over it was always like a, a word of mouth type of story makes the front page of the local paper and so on so I wonder if there's some type of like um just a willingness of the belief system. I don't have a good explanation for the family members, the the kids and the partners, but um, let's see if they give us something maybe more substantial for that. I'm going with power of belief so far. I'm going with power of belief. And I think maybe it would be, how about this? Let's put it this way. More plausible that families of intelligence officers through power of belief could manifest the symptoms versus no one who's not an intelligence officer <laughs> getting targeted by it. That's the part that seems a little bit more suspicious. So I guess uh, I'm more willing to believe that it's a, a they're manifesting the symptoms based on power of belief versus nobody else, no civilian is getting targeted. Possibly, possibly. Let's see if they give it. Holy shit. Ah, ah, God, oh, they got me so bad. Ooh, ooh, it hurts, ow. That's all right. All right. This is this is enough silliness. Let's do some homework. Stop playing. Stop time. whatever it's doing. I don't know. I just oh, this fuck. I can't stop. There's too many sounds. I don't know what tab is playing. I can shut up. Sixty minutes. Jesus Christ. All right. Vanna syndrome is fake, but mainstream media. Fucking is what is playing now? Oh my affected god. U.S. diplomats world wide attacking the nervous Al Jazeera system on, uh, there's okay there's enough things um <laughs> i know now i'm let's just get a good one for it just because we're doing it now Ugh, yeah that's the stuff vanna syndrome is fake but mainstream media couldn't get enough of it for years this piece what is the date on this 2023 this I, this is they won't stop they won't stop. American intelligence agencies have concluded that Havana, Havana syndrome isn't real, no surprise, but that determination comes long, long after mainstream media credulously and repeatedly reported on it and repeated intelligence officers' absurd claims. There was a minor bit of good news in the midst of a chaotic world this week. We can finally stop pretending Havana syndrome is real because U.S. intelligence has just more or less admitted it isn't. After a years-long review of the anomalous health incidents suffered by spies and diplomats in Cuba from 2016 on, the Office of the Director of National Intelli Intelligence, DNI, revealed this week that no, the mysterious ailments almost certainly weren't the work of some nefarious foreign power blasting microwaves beam beams super villain-like at Americans working at embassies and other government offices around the world. While the agencies acknowledge that U.S. personnel sincerely and honestly have reported their experiences, including those that were painful or traumatic, they concluded that the microwave weapon theory that prevailed in the Washington establishment was, quote, not born, not born out by sequential medical and technical analysis, and that they, quote, identified medical, environmental, and social factors that plausibly can explain the symptoms. Croon in chat, 07. In other words, what Havana syndrome suffers, let's get let's get a good say oh, oh god oh. <laughs> Havana syndrome sufferers experience was very real, but only in the sense that a placebo is also real medicine. There's a good chance that the arcane energy weapon they imagined as the cause of their suffering was just literally the sound of crickets. <laughs> literally the sound of crickets. This is from uh, BuzzFeed News. A declassified State Department report says microwaves didn't cause Havana syndrome. Uh, and then here they are. Here they are. Blasting us from unseen rays. My God. I'm dying. I'm suffering here. To get more specific about the intelligence assessment, five of the agencies involved concluded that it was, quote, very unlikely a foreign adversary was responsible, with two of them having moderate to high confidence and three holding moderate confidence in that conclusion. 
Two agencies deem it unlikely, albeit with low confidence. The actual investigation, as outlined by the DNI, was fairly thorough, involving hundreds of interviews with sufferers, forensic analysis of electronics, a review of dozens of recordings meant to have captured the offending phenomena, and hundreds more site surveys to name just a sampling. Many might find all this ridiculous, but there are very real stakes involved. Vanna syndrome wasn't just a harmless bit of national security paranoia, the likes of which seem to be more and more common these days. It played a role in a concerted campaign begun by the Donald Trump administration to lay the groundwork for regime change in Cuba, whose, government over, whose government's overthrow has long been an obsession among the U.S. right in particular. Colleen has a link here. Wait, what are we looking at? Oh, shit. Is this his website? Is this the guy's Syndrome.com? tech is this his like foundation for doing havana syndrome what are all these energy weapons that people are linking <laughs> linking in the chat let me read this article <laughs> it's not a coincidence that trump began his policy of maximum pressure on cuba in 2017 a mere two months before the claims of havana syndrome started appearing in the u.s press which for years Afterward, flatly and uncritically presented the fantastical claims as fact. U.S. diplomats in Cuba were injured by a sonic weapon, read one Time magazine headline. Notably, the supposed foreign culprit behind the alleged attacks was constantly cycling through the rogues gallery of Washington's villains of the week, from Cuba initially to Russia and then China, and now we're back to Russia again, of course. The most surprising thing is that Iran didn't at any point end up in the rotation. Hmm. That is, okay, if we're really placing bets, we should start a betting pool for how long it's going to take for Iran to have a microwave sound energy weapon. That'll be, that'll be the real tell. You'll hear nary a peep about the establishment press's role in drumming up hysteria about this subject, though. As I wrote two years ago, he's been covering this for two years, let's see. Yeah, Branko Marchet, Mar, uh, Marchetic, how do you say his last name? Well, the media finally learned something from its fake Havana Syndrome debacle. Two years ago, when we first learned that the State Department had quietly concluded the, quote, attacks were most likely a combination of crickets and psychological issues. Here, the misinformation came from mainstream outlets, where it reached and was trusted by far more people than a Substack post, YouTube video, or Facebook ad, all with the aim of stoking conflict with a foreign government. This is really... This is it right here. We are watching. I've had, I don't know how many conversations about this recently. Hamas has one. <laughs> it's Iran and Hamas doing the microwave weapon, weapons on CIA agents. That's exactly, that's exactly it. We're watching the delegitimization of the delegitimation of uh, mainstream media. And then stories like Havana Syndrome are adding fuel to the fire, which is going to shed people to Substack, YouTube, and Facebook, and so on. Lots of lots of disinformation, malinformation, misinformation, all of the information's on those websites. But I mean, this is just absolute deep state psychosomatic illnesses manifested by people who literally work for the CIA. Why are we trusting them now? Why did we trust them in the past? And their mouthpiece, the journalists, none for me, thank you. Will the press learn anything from this episode? Because this is only one instance of the media lending authority to unsubs unsubstantiated and ultimately debunked claims made by those in power that are meant to ratchet up hostilities with another country, even potentially lay the groundwork for war. We heard literally that fucking sentence in the 60 Minutes video that this is an act of war by Russia because they're targeting our dear, precious CIA agents. The Russiagate fiasco, which charged that Trump was literally being blackmailed or otherwise controlled by Vladimir Putin, resulting in an aggressive overcorrection by the former president, was the most high-profile and ignominious of these, but there have been many other such absurd claims. 1. The Kremlin was paying the Taliban bounties to kill U.S. soldiers. 2. Iran was planning to kill the U.S. ambassador to South Africa. 3. Iran had recently sentenced 15,000 protesters to death. 4. Russia was planning to use chemical weapons in Ukraine. 5. Russia blew up the Nord Stream pipelines. Yes, they blew up their own pipeline, which <laughs> Ukraine and the United States had nothing to do with whatsoever. Substack, Substack brought you that story also, by the way. 
uh, uh, continuing on here, that Russia had fired a missile into Poland, killing two people, and finally that China had deliberately flown a spy balloon over the continental United States, and that three more airborne objects shot bound by U.S. fighter jets were also Chinese spy balloons. <laughs> a week later, U.S. officials admitted the first flight was probably accidental, and that the later objects weren't spy balloons or Chinese in origin. This list isn't remotely exhaustive. The use of U.S. intelligence in this way has enjoyed a rehabilitation ever since U.S. and British officials' months-long predictions of a Russian invasion eventually came to pass in late February 2022. Maybe we really could take officials at their word when they assured that the public it was assured the public that something was the case. The thinking went, even if they never did present the evidence for the public to make their minds up for themselves. But this reasoning was missing several key points. First, that senior current formal U.S. officials had later told journalist James Risen that the public had an incomplete picture of that very intelligence, and that the CIA had concluded that Putin hadn't decided to invade at the same time officials were saying war was imminent. That the decision only came in February, suggesting that the Biden administration's rebuffing of negotiations had been a deciding factor in that decision, and that U.S. officials admitted a few months later that they were routinely feeding the press low confidence intelligence and simply quote things that are possible rather than likely this is worth keeping in mind as the biden administration prepares to sanction china over what it claims is intelligence that the chinese government plans to deliver arms to russia maybe this intelligence is real and solid maybe like all of these other examples it isn't but given that sanctions on china like those on russia would deal a serious economic blow to working people not just in the united states but all over the world Trump's tariffs on China's, China alone cost a quarter of a million U.S. jobs, not to mention how it needlessly ratchets up tensions with another country and brings us closer to war. The press has a duty to treat those and these and future assertions with the same skepticism and causation that they quite rightly apply to governments like Russia's or China's. The stakes are too high not to. Well, there you have it. I have absolute, definitive, unwavering trust in the United States government and I believe all of these dear, precious intelligence officers. For me, the case is settled. Jury's out. <laughs> what else are we? What else are we doing tonight? Um, let's grab. Let's grab a quick news clip on this. We'll do. We'll finish out this segment. We'll watch a quick, uh, quick clip here, and then we're gonna go back to our um, praying for Armageddon series tonight. Oh shit! Should I do some of these tabs that people have? Oh, this is it. Oh, nice. Okay, thank you for reminding me about this. AdvancedEchelon.net. Wow, what a site. Advanced Echelon Forward Solutions. Let's zoom out of this a little bit, see if we can see more of it. Careers? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, careers. <sighs> At Advanced Echelon, we work with one of the biggest and fastest growing problem sets in national security. We collaborate on interesting projects from various fields and industries, providing the best service by our extraordinary team. Be part of this team. Oh, boy. Um, where can I, like, file my complaint? Look up the address and then check it out on Street View? What? The address to the organization? All right, 7708 Richmond Highway. What are we what are we going to find here? Bro, what? No way. Are you kidding me? Are you f Wait. Oh, I didn't I thought it was just I understand this. I understand it's the wrong address. I understand it's the wrong address. I just thought you were going to bring us to like a dead end of a street that didn't. Okay. I was like, how did you find that that quick? Let me get the address here. Where, what are, what are we looking for? The Home Depot? What? <laughs> what? Is this the right address now? 7708 Richmond Highway, Unit uh, 1053, Alexandra, Virginia. Street View, okay. It's in a shopping center? Let's drop our little dude.
It's next to okay, so it's in a shopping center next to China One and America. Are you are you kidding me? <laughs> did you did you know this before? Where did you find this? <laughs> Where how did you come across this? This <laughs> it's in a it's in the shopping center that they sell Chinese spy balloons. Where are they in this? Rent a center. Do they have an office here? This is just a Home Depot parking lot, dude. Where is this more Home Depot this way? All right, whatever. Maybe they're somewhere. Maybe they're somewhere else in this. I don't know. Maybe they're around the back. This is pretty funny, though. I have to say, it's next to like China. China's next to basically the text spells out Chinese spy balloon. Spy balloon. Okay. Um, what else are we doing here? We're gonna watch this news clip. I love the graphic design in this, and I love their like MRI scan here. This is very, very sick. Advanced Echelon is the one company in the US with interagency experience taking care of anomalous health incidents, Vanna syndrome survivors. Their main office is inside the car, the owner's car in the parking lot. <laughs> All right, Havana Syndrome. Let's hear what they have to say. Remember those U.S. diplomats in 2016 in Havana who all supposedly got sick with a mysterious illness, including dizziness, nausea, extreme ear pain, and headaches? It was dubbed Havana Syndrome. Well, last night on 60 Minutes, a military investigator spoke out and said that Russia's GRU Unit 29155 may be behind the neurological symptoms. The five-year investigation by CBS, The Insider, and the German publication Der Spiegel also stated that there were, quote, likely attacks two years earlier in Frankfurt, Germany, when a U.S. government employee was knocked unconscious by what was supposedly described as a strong energy beam. That victim was later diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury. A lawyer who represents more than two dozen clients from CIA, FBI, and state who have symptoms akin to Havana syndrome came on the TV show and told Scott Pelley that his clients were all working on Russia related issues. Here's where things get really interesting. Two studies from National Institutes of Health out in March stated that conditions of the 80 government employees and family members who experienced, quote, anomalous health incidents in America, Cuba, China, and Austria found no consistent evidence of brain injury. Also in the office of the Director of National Intelligence pointed at the outlet Axios to its annual threat assessment, which came out in February. Simply the agencies have concluded it is very unlikely a foreign adversary is responsible for the condition. So what exactly is going on here? Is it a cover up? Is it a conspiracy? Why is Havana syndrome back in the headlines shortly after it seemed to be debunked on a scientific basis? I, so this is wild. You know, we talk about um, health officials and the the state department conspiring with journalists to suppress <laughs> narratives. But in this case, they're all on a different side. <laughs> the health officials say Havana syndrome is not real. Mm -hmm. The U.S. government, the the spies, say that if it is real, we don't know if it's real, but if it is real, it's not likely to be of, of foreign origin. It's more maybe there's something in the water or something. But the journalists are saying Russia did it. So here we are, and I, I th obviously it's just impossible to opine on it or tell. Hopefully we can get some, some better reporting. Of course, I, am, I have a knee-jerk suspicion of some narratives that are along the lines of Russia did it, given the way journalists have reported on everything Russia-related, yeah. with such catastrophizing about the misinformation, how they've, you know, these are the journalists claim they stole our elections by, by putting out so much bad information on social media. Um, you know, that said, these are specific journalistic outlets. This is CBS, a German outlet, saying that they have evidence of some diplomatic cables, I believe, a, a Russian origin pointing to an attack in Germany. So that's a, that, is a little bit more significant, frankly. Right, but it's not just kind of liberal media Russia gating here. Um, Carlos uh, Jimenez, who apparently is the only Cuban-born member of Congress, took to Fox News saying that he's calling on President Biden to hold the dictatorship in Cuba accountable for collaborating with Russia to actively target 
and kill oh, of course. Is this a, oh, of a, course. A, a, a silver lining oh, of bipartisanship no. <laughs> happening here where everybody comes together in agreement on Havana syndrome? And, and the, but there's also bipar bipartisanship or, or, or you know, <laughs> um, similar ideological from opposite corners on the other side. So when I look at when I search Havana syndrome on uh, on Twitter, the first two results are from about as two dissimilar people you can find. Jeet here, mm -hmm. who is a, I think you would agree, leftist progressive journalist, either with The Nation or Mother Jones or something like that. Yeah, the Nation. Uh, and he's the first one saying that, um, on the one hand, medical investigations say Havana syndrome is psychosomatic and mass psychosis. On the other hand, a bunch of spooks believe it's real, and so do their journalistic mouthpieces. So very much being on the... You know, it's not Anti, real. Yeah. And then the next one is J.D. Vance saying that as well. <laughs> Very conservative. Yeah, about I mean, this does this feel like an establishment, Horseshoe like coalition. much of kind of the warmongering um, military-industrial complex uh, type uh, agendas. It's it's the solid center, the bipartisan center, yeah. who wants a lot of these things. And if you are interested in a kind of a global escalation of um, war than having a scapegoat in your own backyard using scary sound waves to target um, you, government officials who are working on Russia-related projects certainly is a kind of um, target that maybe you could hang a little bit of military funding on. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. They're really going with with Russia did it, which again, I you know, I, we can look at the. I, I, I can't. I won't dismiss out of hand reporting. I have not carefully parsed through or heard the counter argument for yet. But um, it is. Uh, it is. I mean, some of this stuff sounds like what energy weapon. This sounds like. I don't know if you've caught up on the three body problem, which I, I am not. now watching, and I, I, out I watched out of order because I, I just happened I to like see like to the middle episode, uh, middle two it. episodes. I, like, I think there's eight. This is this new science fiction show on Netflix, on Netflix. by uh, a, a Chinese author. It's it's a it's sci-fi. It's about aliens, aliens coming to Earth, and there is a. <laughs> I won't spoil it. There is a. So because in the three body problem, there's an energy weapon. That's uh, that's evidence enough for me. All right, this bit is tired. We're done with this bit. We are continuing our series about, uh, it's called Praying for Armageddon, about evangelicals in the United States and their influence on America's foreign policy. This is episode two. We watched episode one last week, and I think we all enjoyed it pretty much. Um, I was really, play the noise one more time. I actually just, I just dropped a link in the Discord. I'm... It's <laughs> such a <laughs> I like can't stop myself from shit posting even while I'm shit posting on the stream in the 2 seconds where I'm not talking I'm posting in the music channel like who else is blasting this track of just the 7 second clip of Havana syndrome That's it. Oh yeah. Let's crank it up too. Can it go even can it go louder? Go louder. Do more. Do more. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that okay that was too much no stop 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 that was ugh. yeah we got us we got it we got it what oh my god what did billy billy do here hold on we've got a furniture we've got a a tie id we've got a tie id he clocked his tie <laughs> hold on all right all right this is we're gonna be God damn it, dude. What the fuck? On a scientific basis. Let's get a close-up of the anchor. Atkinson's Irish poplin necktie polka dots, light blue with white dots. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. What is this link here? I'm not logged into the... I don't have a Times account. Let's, uh, the Chinese murder plot behind th Netflix's three-body problem... Kin Lee, a billionaire who helped produce the science fiction hit, was poisoned to death by a disgruntled executive. His attacker now faces the death penalty. I haven't seen. I would be interested to read this. Um, I might. I think we might have to do this for a separate stream, though, because this is Billy. I'm I'm very impressed by this. This is uh, Kin Lee. How did I say it? Lee Kin. Yeah. Um. I'm very impressed by the ID, but this is like a 45 minute segment. So we're going to do this and we might go a little bit long tonight on the stream, but uh, we all enjoyed this. A bunch of like Zionist tough guy bikers 
yeah, big um uh the, the most like interesting thing I think we saw in the last episode was just how bizarre it is to be a nationalist for a country you're not from, <laughs> like and not one that you live in. Yeah, dude, there's a whole there's like okay, in the other tab, because we're gonna be behind, I will find how many episodes there are to this. I think there might be four or something like that. We're not gonna do all four of them in a row, but I definitely wanted to do two and we'll see uh we'll see how long that list is. But I'm gonna start it now so we don't fall too too far behind. Yeah. The end of time. When is that? That's right now. The next thing that's about to happen is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that's necessary for this new world order is at the door. Major uncontrollable fires, the Bible said, will break out all over the world spontaneously. The sun and the moon will be darkened. Earthquakes so shattering that the islands of the sea will disappear. The seven seas of the earth will turn to blood. World war so bloody that the blood of those who are killed in battle flows up to 200 miles to the bridle of a horse. It's only the two episodes. The coronavirus was it's no just accident. The two. Sorry, I thought there were more for a second. When you see these signs, when you see nations against nation, yeah, the editing when you incredible. see the moral collapse of America, when you see these things, the apocalypse is coming. Yeah, just the two. So this is it. This is the conclusion. I grew up in the suburbs of the DC area. September 11th was a huge event in my life. Seeing the Pillars of smoke billow out of the Pentagon. The war on terror, to see the whole country so swiftly move to suspend civil liberties, to march towards war. And I was coming of age around the time of the Iraq war. Followed the 2004 election campaign where Bush had mobilized evangelical voters and created this dichotomy of, of good versus evil, us versus them. Bush even went so far as to call the war on terror a new crusade. And so that's why I think it's important to be critical, to look at the role of the Christian right in shaping US policy towards the Middle East and potentially pushing us towards war. to speak like with Colonel Wilkinson. He was the chief of staff to Colin Powell. He left government during the Bush years and became an outspoken critic of the war in Iraq, the war on terror. And he's concerned about the role of evangelical Christian nationalists in the military. Some of these Christian nationalists have 
zeroed in on some biblical prophecy that if a certain criteria is met in terms of the chosen people of Jews controlling Jerusalem, that there will be an Armageddon. What are the dangers of having people that have this kind of doomsday mindset that cataclysmic war is important for bringing back Christ? How can that endanger U.S. interests? The most vivid danger in all of this, I think, is the special relationship with Israel. Christians United for Israel, John Hagee's group, is a quintessential example of the danger. They are looking for the U.S. relationship with Israel, ultimately, to bring about Armageddon and the rapture and Christ's thousand-year reign. That's what they're there for. This is the first time that soldiers from the United States are going to be permanently assigned to a base in Israel. We in the military said no to every president from Harry Truman on. We will not put a military base in Israel. If you order us to, we'll quit. Now we got a base there. We got a base there. When Hezbollah has the temerity to put a missile on that base, or by accident, we're in for a penny, in for a pound. That base is there, and Trump allowed that base to go there. So that, as we say in the military, if the really hits the fan, we're in it immediately, because the U.S. has been attacked. The stars and stripes flies over that base. Most of the young people that come into the military are there probably because they're trying to figure out who they are. From an evangelistic standpoint, I've always referred to them as ripe as black bananas. <laughs> Chaplains are increasingly coming from the fundamentalist sex. These evangelical fundamentalist chaplains go to some place where basic training graduates, and they say beforehand in their meeting, these troops are at their most vulnerable. They've been racked and trained to death. Go get them. We try to reach our recruits immediately. There are 450,000 recruits in the freshman class of this next year's armed forces. That's going through boot camp. We will touch about 200,000 of them this next year. They had something like 70 baptisms at Fort Jackson at the end of basic training exercises. And they proselytize and they get them, they take them down and baptize them, and then they're part of the Christian nationalists. I don't know, I'm feeling like we're fucked. <laughs> Colonel Wilkerson recommended that I talk to Mikey Weinstein. He's with the Military Religious Freedom Foundation, and he's worked for the last two decades oh my God. shining a light on religious fundamentalist influence within the military. This is kind of a, a, a shadow war. I come from a military family. My dad uh, went to the Naval Academy. So I applied for it, got into all three of the military academies. The Cadet HAP, the Air Force Academy. When people come to us, they are freighted with terror. They are terrified of reprisal, revenge, retaliation. We're closing in on 76,000 US Marines that are clients of ours. And about 95% of them are Christians themselves being dehumanized and marginalized for not being Christian enough.
The military ministry of crew only does three things, really. We win people to Christ, we build them up in their faith, and we send them out into the world to do the same thing. There are probably three dozen parachurch organizations, some of them well-known, like Campus Crusade for Christ Military Parish Ministries. Parachurch. Focus on the family, oh. Officers Christian Fellowship, that are incredibly involved in the military. They have offices on military bases, they have senior military officials. We call those fundamentalist Christians or dominion Christians. The Seven Mountains Mandate, the New Apostolic Reformation. Their job is to transform the military and the militaries of the world into this version of this weaponized Christianity. Jerry Boykin, former three-star general, made it clear that when Jesus comes back, he'll be carrying an AR-15. It's not a veneer. I mean, these are true believers. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. And in Revelation 19, it says when he comes back, he's coming back as a warrior, riding a white horse with a blood-stained white robe, carrying a sword. And I believe that sword he'll be carrying when he comes back is an AR-15. Holy shit. You know, in the oh, media, he's not joking. Images of uh, crusader wow. symbols, of Christian symbols, of you know, units deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan. We had 138 U.S. Marines that came to us in Helmand province in Afghanistan. They were walking into the villages out there, and the village elders, and most of them hadn't even heard of 9-11, but they'd heard of what I ended up calling the Jesus Rifle, a company Jesus called Trijicon, based out of Michigan. They had about a $2 billion contract to make rifle scopes for our military. On the scopes, if you look closely, were biblical citations from the book of Matthew, Mark, Whoa. Luke, John, Revelation. It was burned into the scope. Now think of the optics of American soldiers shooting Muslims in Afghanistan through the scopes that have the New Testament citations. Wow. These are Air Force fighters that can carry nuclear weapons. Complete crusader iconography, complete with this, uh, the, the helmet, the three cross-shaped stars, of course the sword and the crucifix. All stuff like this does is completely motivate the recruiting efforts for Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, ISIS, the Mujahideen, and the Taliban. How do they refer to America? The Crusaders. This, this doesn't help. Oh, shit. We are fucked. We are fucked bad. Nice. Holy shit. That is some incredible footage. <laughs> what? <laughs> Never in the history of the world have all the players been on the stage. Iran, Russia, China, Europe, America, Everything is a quote absolutely from Richard Dawkins. perfect. That's what the atheists have on their scopes. The final battle for global supremacy will be the mother of all wars in Armageddon. There are two Armageddon lobbies in the world. There are the extreme Islamic Armageddon lobby that believe in a final conflict between Islam and everyone else. And then there is the Armageddon lobby of American evangelicals. Evangelical American voters in the Republican Party want a final conflict with all other religions, all other political points of view. They see it as us versus them, true Christians versus everyone else. Nation shall rise up against nation. And as we see these things increase in intensity and frequency, we can know that the Lord is going to return. We don't want peace, we being evangelicals. We want Armageddon. Bring it on. Their view of Zionism is not going to either help Israel or any individual Jew. Their view of Zionism is apocalyptic. So when Israel is finally Whoa. attacked by, say, a nuclear-armed Iran, that suits the Christians fine. It's exactly what they're prophesying. 
Then we'll have a big last battle. Jesus comes back, and we're all going to heaven. Are you listening, Iran? Are you listening, Russia? God's going to wipe you out. The scary thing is, is we are armed with the largest and most powerful military on Earth and thousands of nuclear weapons. And so when you put Armageddon Lobby together with American power, it's a different deal. Love these guys, these guys are so funny. Our organization is leading from eight different points of our country to come together at the geographical center in Lebanon, Kansas. Every 150 miles, we're gonna get off our bike and pray a prayer over our nation. Father God, we stand here at the heart of our nation, the very geographical center of it. Yes. Lord, in recent years, the heartbeat of America has waned. Lord, I've come here into the center of America to plead in this behalf. Yes. Ask you, Lord, to heal the heart. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Father God, I pray for this nation. Yes. I believe for a great revival. Yes. Uh, we believe that it could happen because you're a miracle working What's that God. pine tree flag they have going on there? And nothing but nothing is impossible. Yeah, yeah, amen. Yeah. Appeal to heaven. We go on live in about so they've, they've lined the way with the American flag and the appeal to heaven. The tree flag or the appeal to heaven flag was one of the flags used during the American Revolution. The flag, which featured a pine tree with the motto, an appeal to heaven, or less frequently, an appeal to God, was originally used by a squadron of six frigates that were commissioned under George Washington's authority as the commander-in-chief for the Continental Army in October of 1775. Seven minutes. I need everybody to give a shout and a roar to welcome the six million people that are going to be joining us right at two o'clock. So let's practice. One, two, three. Yeah, it's a mega church right in the middle of the country. Yeah. They chose Lebanon, Kansas because it's exactly in the middle. The enemies of faith and godliness are no longer hiding because our land seems alive now with demonic nice. powers once start. hidden. Yeah. A canopy of darkness seems to have been stretched across the whole nation. Government, the founders believed, derived its just powers from the consent of the governed. 
And without that consent, the government was without foundation. Send us a spiritual awakening. We appeal to heaven. I'm so excited for Gary Bird to be here. Man. We thank you, Jesus, for bringing complete healing to his body and his wife's body. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Four men tried to pick up my motorcycle pinned underneath a tree. And there was a manifestation of a divine angel that came and helped my brother pick that bike up off my wife. And then the Lord brought to my mind about that angel, and he oh, said, God, listen, so where sad. you fail, that's where I show up. I'll tell you, I serve a God that's worthy of all praise and glory. It's my honor to get to pray for them. I want to live a life that says sacrifice is important to me, and I choose to sacrifice. Mark 10, 45, Christ said, I didn't come to be served, I come to serve and to give my life as a sacrifice. Listen, dear Americans, God is trying to get our attention. The destiny of our nation, the hope of our children and grandchildren lies in our hands. So I can't tell you that I believe we are Whoa. at the end of the end. Yeah, what was that? I think we're at the about? end of our comfort. We're at the end of what we know. You're making your people just come into a nation that is very bad. And then the next day, it is a very holy nation. I thank you for everyone that has upheld America whenever we were in need. Whenever we were in need, we had others that helped us. When they were in need, we helped them. Israel will not go down because of us. No one will go down that is our ally that is not trying to attack us and kill us. Take this earth for me, that we do so much, amen. Amen. Now, what giants are we going to face? I think we've already seen some of them. Enemies. Could you, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry to do this, but like, could you imagine any other country if in like, in Vancouver, they had these huge revival tents and then they paraded their kids out onto stage and had them say, God bless America. <laughs> like, don't fuck with America. <laughs> the children yearn for Israel. It's fucking wild, dude. This is, this is crazy. You know, the homosexual movement, the transgender the, the what? The military. Whoa, The abortion okay. issue. Wasn't, wasn't expecting that. homosexual movement. It's kind of like we're still telling a fairy tale. Everything's going to be okay. God is good. And everything's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. If you read the book, if you truly believe Revelations, it's going to get worse.
I'm in Texas because this is really the heartland of the Christian Zionist movement. Many of the political leaders and the theological Christian leaders who are really the tip of the spear in terms of pushing the U.S.-Israel alliance, pushing the kind of end times theology. It's in big flags. Uh, they're right here in Texas. This is their power base. Our colleague talked to you about talking to Phil King. Okay. Hey folks, this is a private event. We got to go. Oh, we got tickets. We're not gonna have anti. -in this is one of the many reasons I gave m I gave up my ordination. Wait, tell us more about that. That's uh, that's a, that sounds pretty interesting. We haven't heard about that before. Anything. This is the great state of Texas. Got to go. Anti what? Uh, Y'all anti-Israel or whatever, we're not doing anything like that. I'm not anti-anything. I'll report you to the FBI, so you got to go. You're reporting us to the FBI? I would. For what? Sir, you got to go. Just leave. Okay. Okay. All Have right. Good... Many of the proponents of this kind of militant pro-Israel policy don't want to talk about the merits of this policy. They don't want to talk about the ramifications. They don't want to talk about the human rights issues raised by uh, Israel in terms of the displacement of Palestinians. They run away or they literally kick reporters out and threaten to report them to the police. You know, like you should get that disguise with from 60 Israel Minutes. Palestine conflict. Go in like Lady it's Gaga. to some of the <laughs> core issues driving political instability that in the wig, U.S. No one would know it was There's him. too much Impossible polarization. To There's too much dehumanization. Calling Cornerstone Church. Our office hours are 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. I've been trying to get in contact with Pastor Hagee and his church, Cornerstone Church in San Antonio, for some time. I've tried to get interviews, but they've been completely walled off. Join me now is Pastor Robert Jeffress, member of the White House Faith Initiative, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Dallas. What do you make of this dust-up between these two congresswomen in Israel? <laughs> They said they didn't want to go to Israel. They wanted to go to occupied Palestine. David, that proves that these two women were not on a fact-finding mission. They were on a propaganda spewing mission. And Israel was right. Dr. Robert Jeffers is one of the most powerful evangelical wow, leaders. Incredible. Palatosis 911. 15 years of full-time evangelical ministry. 98 to 2013. Now atheist. The corruption is astounding and I was part of a denomination. Wow, incredible story. I imagine you must have been raised in the faith well. 15 years, wow. Amazing. In the country. He's on TV all the time. He leads one of the largest mega churches in the country. He's a spiritual advisor to Donald Trump. Now, Perfect Ending is a book that talks a lot about in times, right. prophecy. Yes. Okay. The Bible doesn't tell us the when, but the Bible tells us the what. The Dr. Jeffers is outspoken on the end times, the battle of Armageddon. You know, he's not just talking about this to his own flock, he's, he's making policy. He's influencing Donald Trump, he's advising him. He's going to Israel and shaping some geopolitics there. Would you join me in welcoming our great friend and the 45th president of the United States of America, President Donald J. Trump. Come on up, Mr. President. Thank you so much. God bless you. Love you. Lucky for me, I was raised by a pack of monkeys mentored by Richard Dawkins. Robert, I want to thank you so much. Uh, you know, you never told me how beautiful this is. <laughs> Highly respected man. He does very well on television and spreading the word. 
Trump sounds so sarcastic when he you gives have a special relationship to with Trump as his friend, oh, as his him. spiritual advisor. Could you talk a little bit about your relationship with Trump? Well, President Trump was here just a few weeks ago in our church. Uh, he's the only president who is able to move our U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. But people wonder why that was such a big deal. What that means is Israel possesses the land. In the historical city of David in East Jerusalem, there's been an attempt to find the archaeological artifacts that form the basis of this ancient city. Right now, there are pal Palestinians living there. What's your view on this City of David project? The Palestinians are trying to do everything they can to stop that project because what they are unearthing is the archaeological evidence that the Jewish people inhabited this land far before what we call Palestinians today. And let oh. me just say a word today. What we call Palestinians, that's a made-up term. You don't find it in history until 100 A.D. I've heard you talk about the Battle of Armageddon. Could you talk about what you see in the Middle East and how that fits the prophetic vision for the Battle of Armageddon? The Bible does teach in Revelation 16 and 19 that there's a final world battle that will take place. How would John describe an Apache helicopter or a tank? Uh, how would he explain a nuclear explosion? He uses the language of appearance. But that doesn't make it any less real. It makes it more real. It means these things are... Yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of a wild thing to say. People in chat are like, well, yeah, it's like they, they've been there for 2,000 years. <laughs> this dude is like a highly confused vampire. He's really got a like not very present uh, behind the eyes. He kind of seems like a Stepford wife or something. Literally going to happen. In this battle of Armageddon, who is on God's side? Or in other words, who's God's enemy? Well, uh, the ultimate enemy is going to be all those who have rejected Christ as Savior. And it's a hard thing for people to believe that wow. Jesus, uh, uh, the carpenter, the mild and meek teacher, is going to return as Revelation 19 describes him, sitting on a horse with a sword and executing those who have opposed God. But that is Jesus. Yes, the first time he came, he came as savior of the world. The next time he comes, he's coming as the judge of all the world. Our program, Pathway to Victory, is seen on television in all 195 countries. We're the most viewed program on the Trinity Broadcasting Network, the largest Christian network in the world. We'll roll this right quick. All right, whenever you're ready. The countdown to Armageddon has begun, and our only hope is that Jesus will return soon to take his children home. Though today's global powers make every attempt to establish binding agreements with other nations, God will have the final say. No matter how hard we try to make world peace, or undo the effects of humanity on this earth, the end of the world is coming, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Bible prophecy always begins and ends with Israel, in which we get a glimpse of the final pages of human history. The seven-year tribulation, the final world battle, and finally, the glorious return of Jesus Christ. My message is titled, Countdown to Armageddon. It feels like the end is near, but once you read and understand the prophecies in Scripture, you'll realize that the end of the world is nothing to fear. Terrifying. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. We have an emergency in chat. The studio chairs were these ones. Studio chairs? The people sitting at the... 
All right, let's see if we can identify them by the back. My browser is, I'm a little too, zo here we go. I'm a little too zoomed in. Okay, we're seeing it from a different angle, but that seems plausible to me. Let's see if we can get another shot of the chairs. I want to see the people that are uh, seated behind the computers. Where is that? That's like around here. The countdown to Armageddon has begun, and our only hope is that Jesus will return soon Where to take his children gone? home. Though today... Maybe it was a little bit earlier. Right quick. Oh, these guys might be sitting in different. These guys look like they're sitting in different chairs, actually. Okay, so we're looking for that. I'm willing to accept it. If chat is willing to accept it, will we, will we take the ID from these chairs? It's. I mean, it's a very distinctive uh, pattern with that kind of circular shape and the um, the U. Hundred percent. Yeah. Mitsu Cherry accepts. Colleen accepts. Look at the mesh, not the chairs at the end. This is the, this is the yeah, this is the one that we're looking at here, right? This like uh, it's reflected on the computer screens even. These are different chairs that you've had different. <laughs> They're different Herman Miller chairs at the goddamn it. <laughs> you can't stop this man. You can't stop this man. These are the chairs at the yes, those that looks exactly like the chairs that they're sitting in. Remarkable. But Remarkable. once you read and understand the prophecies in Scripture, you'll... heard about the news that the Israeli occupation courts have ruled to dispossess us around October or November of 2020. Oh, <laughs> It was such a, a heavy weight um, on my shoulders and the shoulders of my community, particularly because this is something we have dealt with for many, many years. But then we decided we were going to call it what it is and start a campaign against the ethnic cleansing in Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan. What happened in occupied Jerusalem in the summer of 2021 was a conclusion that was decades late. This time around, Palestinians all over the world, all over colonized Palestine, took part in an uprising that called this apartheid, this police brutality, by its name of settler colonialism. Sheikh Jarrah, where everything crystallized, where everything started, was the microcosm that reflected the seven decades of Zionist rule in Palestine.
In a nutshell, what's happening in Palestine is ethnic cleansing. We are dealing with a fanatic regime that is backed by evangelicals and people who believe in that fanatic ideology of Zionism, in which they are willing to depopulate an entire country of its native inhabitants to bring on Jesus or Armageddon or whoever the want to bring on. In our series, Countdown to the Apocalypse, we're looking at the signs Jesus said would precede his visible, literal return to planet Earth. And the first of those signs is the rise of radical Islam. And Jesus said these signs will be like the labor pains, the birth pains that a woman experiences. They will increase in both frequency and intensity before the end comes. of you would like to experience an explosion of God's blessing to enter into a land flowing with milk and honey all of your enemies have been conquered before you walk across the Jordan River and put your foot on the property God wants you to have soldier of the cross we are conquerors in Jesus name the victory is ours advance and conquer right now I'm at a small hotel in the parking lot of Cornerstone Church so not that far away watching a live stream of Pastor Hagee God is waiting in the wings to destroy your enemies. I tried to secure 
uh, sit-down interview that has been so far unsuccessful. So I hope to just get a moment with Pastor Hagee before or after his sermon. Oh my God, are they gonna get him? Are they gonna get him on camera? That would be incredible. Um, excuse me, Pastor Hagee, I have a quick question. Do, do you have a moment for just one question? I wanted to ask if you were trying to bring about the Battle of Armageddon. Is that your goal? Excuse me, why are you holding me this way? Excuse me, sir. What? Hey, but why are you twisting my arm? What? You're twisting it. They really kicked him out of there pretty quick. I, I'm surprised that uh, they even kept that in, to be honest. The stakes are high. John Hagee, he's seen as a kind of a political kingmaker. Presidential hopefuls go to his megachurch, meet with Hagee, seek his endorsement. The president has unilateral authority to launch a strike or use nuclear weapons. So for John Hagee or Grover Jeffers or one of these other pastors who believes that a cataclysmic world war could bring about Armageddon, these are the people whispering in the ear of a president who could actually make that happen. We cannot look away. Billy, I swear to God, I swear to God, this is so incredibly niche. You've got to be kidding me. Elevator light ID? Are you, how is this, po are you using like an AI? To, how are you doing this? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how would you even know what to look for? Are you, are you like furiously Googling elevator lights to find a thing? Oh my God. That's incredible. <laughs> what? I don't even know what to say. I need mean, like true unbridled autism. <laughs> that's the that's amazing. That is amazing work. I am astounded. I am thoroughly astounded. I never thought that not what I would have imagined. One inch clear anodized aluminum frame, clear anodized aluminum panels with white polycarbonate diffusers, strip light fixtures with T8 fluorescent lamps. That is it. Dead on. That's the one. Well, Kingmaker. Incredible. Presidential hopefuls Incredible work. go to his mega church, meet with Hagee, seek his endorsement. That might be one of your best ideas. The president has unilateral of all time to launch a strike. The elevator lights. <laughs> I imagine so Billy has a five John monitor Hagee setup that he uses Robert to be Jeffers constantly searching one of everything he sees during the stream. believes that a cataclysmic world war could bring Amazing. about Armageddon. These are the people whispering in the ear of a president who could actually make that happen. We cannot look away. American foreign policy is guided as much by a theocratic set of ideas as, for instance, Iran or Saudi Arabia is. The next step in the American evangelical community is to turn America into a theocracy. We are very honored to have him, indeed.
Today, in a landmark ruling, the United States Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, essentially ending abortion right. rights at the no, federal level. Point. It's their entire a Texas family, woman facing group, murder charges system. over an abortion. In God We Trust will be required reading in Louisiana schools this year. If, for instance, Trump goes into a second term, beyond that, no you have offense. these evangelical <laughs> theocracy people. If this vision prevails, they would be fighting a genuine crusade. And so their American foreign policy becomes a tool of biblical prophecy. And it hinges on a minority of American voters to whom this is not an issue, it is the issue. Because the whole apocalyptic vision of the end of their own lives hinges on it. It's personal. and everything. No way. We're going to see a time where we're going to have to defend the Christian life with a sword. And there's a strong movement underneath the surface of men that feel this way. We're going to have a bloodbath cool, like we've say. never witnessed since the Civil War. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I knight you. Vans hoodie for your knighting ceremony. <laughs> Dress up a little bit. Wear a nice button down or something. My God. I gotta say, that was fantastic. That was, that was really good. Uh, I'm glad we did both of them. I wish there were more even. I wish there were more of these. Wow. Um, do I have? With me, I was gonna do a promo for. I was gonna do a promo for uh, the game, but uh, I guess I don't have it with me, so I'll just say uh, two things before we sign off for tonight. Okay, so uh, Havana Syndrome, um, fake, made up. Uh, God bless the CIA, and hopefully uh, the Christians don't get us <laughs> uh, into more foreign wars, uh, more foreign wars than we already have. Uh, next week, what are we? We are on April Fool's Day, uh, the first. Dear friend of the stream, Peter Teal was a recent guest on the podcast. Definitely got a few people with that. A few of them. I got a few. I guess someone even texted me like, "Dude, there's no, there's no audio on the podcast today." <laughs> that was I. I had a lot of fun with that one. Um, yeah, there's a new there's a new episode coming out tomorrow, and then next week we're finally gonna launch uh, launch the class fantasy game. Uh, later this month, I'll do a whole stream about it, but you'll get a podcast and a, a Substack newsletter, kind of describing it, going into uh, depth about all the different characters and mechanics of the game. So, I'll do maybe I'll do a little preview for that. I guess, uh, yeah, tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, next week stream, next week Monday, because then I think it's gonna go live on Wednesday, technically. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. The stream was a blast. I'm really glad we watched that piece. That was uh, incredible. If you want to find it, I'll link the URL in the chat. You can always find these in the URL for the videos, for the podcast, for wherever you're watching it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. I will see you next Monday. And thank, thank you, Billy, for the incredible ID. I am I'm blown away with that elevator lighting. <laughs> incredible. Have a good night, everybody.